Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be showing you 15 pro tips that you should integrate into your gameplay. All these tips are gonna be advanced. Some of them are unknown. I've literally heard about no YouTubers talk about some of these, especially uh, as an example, the first tip, which we're gonna talk about, you guys will see. And other tips, while still advanced, are just things that I don't see people talk about enough and questions that I get a lot during my streams, like should I build Elemental Master on this character? Should I level my supports? Should I use Fragile Resin? All that stuff. Um, so it's gonna be a mix of these very important tips you should integrate into your gameplay and these unknown ones that you probably don't know about. So I can guarantee that the vast majority of you will learn at least one to two new things throughout this video, if not more. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. You guys can follow my Twitch if you wanna catch me streaming most nights. That being said, let's get right into it. To let you guys know that I'm legit and I'm gonna give you guys good tips that you probably don't know about, I'm gonna start with one that I haven't heard any YouTuber talk about, and that's how dashing works and the internal cooldown of dash. Now you guys might know if you're just dashing around the world that when you dash, after two, there's like this little cooldown, right? You can't dash for a while. Well, there's a way to get around that. And this is especially helpful against like the water boss where there's that giant death bomb in the middle that you have to uh, run away from and that I can never seem to get. Now with this tip, you guys can basically keep on dashing because the way it works is that you dash twice and then there's like a, a internal cooldown that's character specific, which means you can switch. So here's an example of me just spamming dash, right? There's a, there's a while before I can do it again. And now here's what happens when I switch. Now see, I just dashed six times in a row with no cooldown in between. Now be warned guys, the way this works is that, yes, you can just dash, dash, and then swap and keep dashing, but uh, the internal cooldown, like the cooldown of the dash does not tick when you're not on the specific character. So if you do this, right, and then you swap back to character you already dashed on, like my child, if I swap them and try to dash, it won't work. See, I could, I can't dash and I was spamming it. And that, the reason why it doesn't work is because if you dash and then swap, when you go back to the character, the cooldown will still be up, you have to wait. So just be warned. So the thing we gotta talk about is artifacts, guys, and uh, something that isn't too uh, widespread is you guys should usually tend to level your artifacts to at least level four before deciding if they're good or not, if you're unsure, or if um, an artifact might only have like one good substat. For example, an artifact um, that like this one that has crit damage as a main stat on a circlet, it, like when you look at it right now, it looks okay, but what it really needs is it needs crit rate. So what some people will do is they'll see this, they'll see no crit rate and they'll just abandon it. And what other people will do is they'll say good enough and just level it all the way. But what I recommend you do is you get this to level four to see what the last stat is. Now some uh, level zero artifacts will have all four stats and then you can already tell if it's good or not. But for artifacts that only have three stats or less, if it's like a four star or a three star piece of gear, what you can do is level it to level four till they get all their stats or it might be higher than four if it's a, as I said, a lower uh, star gear. And then when you get to level four, you can determine if it is a good or a bad artifact piece. And what's really cool is when you re-enchant gear, you only lose 10% of the uh, materials that you use, 10% of the XP that you use enchanting that one. So this plus four feather is enough to get this zero, level zero artifact to all the way to plus four, which is really nice. And it only costs 3,700 Mora because it doesn't add any Mora for uh, the amount that I already spent on this artifact. Another thing when determining if an artifact is good enough is what it rolls. So obviously every four levels, there's a random stat that will be upgraded once you already have four stats. And um, if something like this happens where your HP keeps getting upgraded, your artifacts uh, piece might not be the best and you might have to replace it in the future. But if you're noticing, and you actually might not want to invest in it all the way, like let's say you have uh, one good stat out of four or like two, and then the bad stats keep getting upgraded, you might want to stop at like level eight and be like, okay, this artifact or level 16 or something and be like, this artifact might not be worth leveling all the way uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna invest into it. Uh, but on the contrary, if something like this happens where you might have some bad stats, but you get lucky and then your good stats get upgraded all the way, then you can, even an, an artifact with two bad stats can be really good. Like here, um, this combines like the first thing we talked about, which is, it had crit rate, HP, and defense at level zero, right? And then, or at the start anyways, and then the last stat that it got was crit damage, which means discovering that fourth stat made this artifact from, from being okay to actually really good if I get lucky on the rolls. And I did get lucky on the rolls, and now I have 20% crit damage. So uh, this is just, you know, a great goblet despite it having defense and HP. Something you guys should know for cryo characters, you don't want to be building elemental mastery. Even if they're your support uh, cryo character, you should not be building Elemental Mastery. Basically, Superconduct deals very little damage. So when you have a cryo character that uh, you're stacking Elemental Mastery on, it won't increase the damage by that much since it's only since Superconduct is only dealing a little bit of damage because its primary goal is to reduce the enemy's defense. Another cryo reaction is Shattered, and Shattered isn't calculated uh, according to who freezes the target, but it's calculated according to the person who shatters, which means that let's say you're shatter, you uh, you freeze with your Kea, and then you shatter with a Noel who has a Claymore. 
it's Noel's stats that's calculated for the damage of the Shatter. So just for math reasons, building Elemental Mastery on Cryo characters is not worth it. For exploring the world, guys, I would always recommend having a, a, a team in your party setup ready to swap to just for out-of-world out of exploration. Now, this team doesn't have to have good elemental uh, synergies. It doesn't have to be good. It just has to be efficient at exploring the world. So mine is my fourth team. I kind of keep it like this. And this is a great team for just running around exploring. Why? Because I have two um, Animo characters, which gives me the elemental resonance of decreased stamina consumption and increased movement speed, which is very, very nice. Also... Uh, a character like Venti, if you have him, gives you a nice passive. Gives you a nice passive, decreasing your uh, gliding stamina consumption. And then a character like Kea or Razor both have uh, a passive that decreases your sprinting stamina consumption. So I tend to run one of these, uh, either Kea or Razor, with two Anemo characters, and then I just run one DPS character with that, just to clear any mobs or to uh, you know do whatever I need to do. A question I get a lot in my stream is, when should I use my Fragile Resins? Now this depends player to player, and personally I got kind of impatient. I wanted to rush AR40, AR45 to, you know, level my characters, have fun, have stuff to stream for you guys. So personally, I use them a lot, um, trying to reach AR40 and trying to reach 45, and then uh, I've kind of saved some for future events. Now what I would re recommend to you guys is, if you're really bored and you need resin to have fun and you, you just wanna enjoy the game, then you can use your fragile resins when you want. However, I would always recommend saving at least like five to 10 in case MiHoYo releases an event that's really good and where you wanna spend your resin. Now there's a new part of this event coming out soon for us in NA, and honestly, we might wanna spend our fragile resin on it. I, we don't know yet. So keeping fragile resins for an event like this is very smart. The advantages of using this early is that you get uh, you get to get levels pretty fast, but I would say it's better in the late game to use your Fragile Resin, especially at AR45+, plus because then, or I'd say 40+, plus, but especially 45, because then you get much more eff efficient loot with the resin you're spending. If we look at the map, sorry, I'm in combat here, but if we look at the map uh, and we look at some of my uh, farmable resin stuff, this might look different for you guys, but the loot I get is much, much better than what you get at lower AR levels. I get 60,000 Mora at AR45, which means if I were to spend my Fragile Resin and use it on this, I can clear it three times, still get the 300 AR XP, and I also get 180,000 Mora, whereas someone who's lower level will get a lot less. So personally, I would recommend saving it as long as you can, but feel free to use some, especially if you're bored or if you want to hit a milestone, like you want to hit AR40 pretty bad or you're really close to 45. I don't think it's worth to just save a bunch and not have fun in the game. Uh, but for maximum efficiency, I would recommend saving some for events and for AR45 if possible. Especially because AR45, you get, uh, you always get a five star from a domain. If you're doing an artifact domain, you're guaranteed one and you just get better rewards overall. Something I've mentioned in my other videos is that you shouldn't really level your support characters um, and you should prioritize your DPSs. Now, the way I want to say this is, res is basically resource management. So every character unlocks a new talent when you ascend them to a level 70. Well, 60 out of 70, right? So if we look at my Chi-Chi, I've kept her level 60 forever because at level 60 out of 70, once you ascend her, she gets this talent, which is broken. So for all of your supports who have a good talent that you unlock uh, once you ascend them to 60 out of 70, I would recommend at least getting them to that level and then you might not need to level them anymore until you have the resources to do that uh, and that's after you max your dps character you max his artifacts and all that good stuff so i would always recommend leveling your dps before your supports and this is something you guys should already know but what i'm here to tell you and why this is in my opinion an advanced tip is because uh the way certain elemental reactions work actually prioritize leveling your characters now some elemental reactions don't deal much damage like superconduct or um like swirl where you don't really care about the damage it's dealing but you're using let's say venti you're using him for his ultimate to clump up a bunch of enemies but for a support character like a Fischl or an electro support that's going to be proccing overload something that you need to know is that uh, the character's level is much more important than the character's elemental mastery for how much damage they deal and i'm going to show that to you guys so we're gonna run a Fischl with zero elemental, ma zero elemental mastery, no artifacts, and a level one weapon to t show this to you guys, versus a uh, level 20 Lisa with a level 80 book that buffs her, and uh, a maxed artifact set. I just gave like my highest level artifacts. Uh, you can see here what we have. We have um, 442 elemental mastery, and some. Uh, I also gave her some ele electro damage bonus, and I gave her, uh, as you guys saw, a level 80 with it. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to proc overload twice, once with Fischl who has no artifacts and once with, with our level 20 Lisa who has maxed artifacts. So we're gonna apply Pyro. We're gonna start with our Lisa who's level 20. We auto attack 352 on the uh, 
electro hit and 337 377 on the overload which is what matters so 377 then we do the same thing we go to official here just do a charge shot and the overload damage was 1336 you guys saw that pink number that's the one that mattered and then if i do it one more time on official the number here should be boom 1336 again so as you guys saw this is a level one weapon no artifacts versus a maxed artifact maxed weapon low level character and what this means is that for elemental reactions where you're trying to deal damage leveling your character is way more important than artifacts and weapons however in general i wouldn't recommend leveling your supports until your dps is leveled i wasn't going to mention this shot because you guys might know about it but uh, since we're in the month of November, I think it's crucial because right now you guys can get Bennett, who's one of the best supports in the game. I believe he's like the one of, if not the best four star character. He's just so, so good, guys. So be sure that if you are wishing and you're getting these Stardusts, these Star Glitters, that you are spending them. Now, uh, I know other videos have talked about them, so I'll try to keep this brief. But basically for Stardust, what you want, the most important thing is you get these Fates, which you can get every month. You also get this Mora. And then after that, get whatever you want because Stardust, you get a lot of if you're wishing. Or even if you're free to play, you still get a decent amount of. So you can uh, spend this the way you want. But for Star Glitter, I would tend to save up because maybe there will be like five stars in the shop eventually or more four stars or the next rotation might be better. But uh, as a general rule, wishes are fine to get. The characters, if you need them, are great. Bennett is the best, best thing you can buy in the shop right now. He's so good. Uh, and even constellations on him are amazing. I got my C1 Bennett from the shop, which is great. Also, the weapons are pretty good. However, they are expensive. They do cost 24 uh, Masterless Star Glitter, so you can sort of be wary on if you want them. But the secondary stat on all of them is crit damage, which is very nice. One advanced tip you guys might have heard of is animation canceling. Now, some of these are character specific and I can't get into all of them, but as a general rule, you can animation cancel a lot. Um, let's say you have a bow user like Child. The last attack of his uh, bow is very laggy. You see all the time that was wasted there? What you can do is if you're doing the same thing, you can just dash right away or jump and uh, you can start attacking again. Same thing with Claymore users, for example, if you're running Razor, after the last attack, there's gonna be a long amount of lag where you can jump to cancel it or you can dash uh, and then just start attacking immediately. Now for animation canceling guys, there's a lot that are character specific and honestly there's a ton, so I can't get into all of them or this video would be like an hour long. So be sure you look up uh, specific ones for your character and if you want me to make a guide on that, let me know in the comments and I can. Something that ties into animation canceling is uh, managing your energy recharge on your support characters. Now, for Venti, there's a way to animation cancel it, and that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys. But as a general rule, for most support characters, you wanna use your E, which is your elemental skill, before your Q, which is your elemental burst. And the reason for that is because your E, your, your skill, will generate a bunch of elemental particles, and while they're traveling to your character, you can use your elemental uh, burst, and then you'll gain energy immediately from the particles uh, that you get from using your elemental skill while you're using your elemental burst. Now, I know I just talked a lot and very fast, so I apologize, but basically it's a lot easier to show you and that's why I went over it quickly. So in order to demonstrate this, we're gonna do this on these Sonics. We're gonna press E and then Q, and you guys are gonna see I'm immediately gonna get some particles back. You saw them right arrive to me instantly. Those were the particles from my E, and I got my Q out immediately. So that's just one way you guys can maximize your energy recharge on supports. You press your elemental skill and then your elemental burst. Now this may be one of the more obvious tips of the video, but do your daily runs, guys. And now this is stuff that doesn't cost resin, so run around, do your boss runs, gather all these materials. Look how many I have, because I'm ready for my next ascensions, for whenever I need them, uh, I don't have to go grind. For all the new characters that come out, if Zhongli needs it, if his weapon needs it, I'm ready. Also, if every three days you do your ores when they respawn, you can get basically unlimited weapon resources. You can also go to your friends' worlds and co-op. Uh, if you don't have friends, you can join my Discord and ask people. Also, all the flowers you need for ascension materials, I try to stock up on them, like for Venti, um, and like all of these, like you need these for Bennett, you need uh, these for Zhao when he comes out. All of these materials you can farm before you get to the level where you're gonna need them. So let's say I know that in one AR level, I'm gonna be AR 50, so I'm gonna have to ascend a bunch of characters. I can go out right now and start collecting my small lamp grass uh, to be ready to ascend my official, my Diluc, all that stuff. Here's a rapid fire tip. Uh, before a new patch, like 1.1, which released a pretty hard boss fight with Child and a lot of new content, and with 1.2, 1.3, which are gonna release like new regions, new characters, new bosses, all that stuff, try to prep your food in advance because materials like uh, ham, you have to process, or which takes a lot of time. Crab, you have to collect every day, which takes a while. Same with all of these. So try to be ready for a new patch by just prepping a bunch of food. 
because you'll never know if there's gonna be a really hard boss fight or repeatable content that costs resin that's really hard that you want to beat as fast as you can with like attack boosting food or just you might need to heal a lot so here's a tip that I found out about literally yesterday uh, you guys know that island right over here that we there's a hidden quest for you can see it right here on top of star star snatch cliff well over there is the biggest spawn of crabs you can get a bunch and you really need crabs for the best food in the game the adeptus temptation so crabs are the hardest uh, part of this recipe to get and there's a bunch here so i'm going to show you guys how to get there if you forgot or don't know um and if you haven't done the quest on the island obviously do it but i'll show you guys how to get there and how many crabs you can farm uh, there's also a good farming spot on falcon coast and there's some uh, near the guyan area but let's just show you this one because it's the biggest uh it's, i call it crab island honestly so you want amber in your party because she reduces your gliding stamina consumption venti also does that but uh amber is free also, if you want to be safe, you can use like a food like the Barbados Ratatouille, which decreases your gliding consumption even further. And then there's also other stamina foods like Northern Smoked Chicken if you need, all that stuff. So you should be fine. So let's go. Okay, let's talk about how to maximize healing on supports. So for Barbara and Bennett, their healing scales off of HP for both of these. As you guys can see, it scales off of HP. Now, the way you want to do this is um, basically you want HP percent on your goblet and healing bonus on your circlet if you're trying to maximize, if you're just trying to maximize your healing and nothing else. Now, the reason for this is because I'm going to put text on screen, but basically the different bonuses uh, multiply, whereas similar bonuses just add to each other. And just to explain this very simply, uh, a circlet is the only piece you can get healing bonus on as a main stat and you can't get as a substat, which means you do want the healing bonus circlet on any character, well, on Barbara or Bennett if you are trying to heal. And then for your goblet, you can run that HP percent on both Barbara and Bennett. Now for characters like Chi Chi, Noel, and Jean, who I don't have, um, there's a different question. So for Noel, it's do you want defense or healing percent? Well, what I would do is I would run, uh, I would stack defense on her, but for circlet, I would take something like the one Bennett has right now, uh, unfortunately, I don't use Noelle, so I don't have her geared, but I would put healing bonus on her uh, for the circlet. And then you can stack defense on the other pieces. For Chi Chi and Jean, uh, it's basically you got to ask the question, do you want healing bonus or attack percent? For my Chi Chi personally, I just stack attack percent on her because I feel like she already heals so, so much that she doesn't need that bonus healing percent, especially with the Maiden, Maiden Beloved. But if you just want her as a pure healer, you can put that healing bonus on her. Same thing with the Jean, whereas you should probably run healing bonus if that you're just trying to make her your main healer, but um, you can also just stack attack on her if you want. So I saved the most important tip for last, guys, and that is to just have fun and to remember that this is a game and you're meant to enjoy yourself. And the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of people might be like, oh, I really don't like Bennett. I don't want to play him. I hate him, all that stuff. And they just force themselves to level characters that they don't enjoy just because they're meta. Now, I want you guys to know that almost everyone or just about everyone in this game is good uh, slash viable. So even if... Um, let's say tier list put your character at like the bottom, but you really enjoy them. I would still tell you to play them and make them work in your comp because you're at the end of the day, you're here to have fun and all characters, they're all viable as long as you build a good team around them. A lot of people ask me why I don't use Jin Q uh, and I might level him and make a video on him eventually, but personally right now, I know he's good, but I just don't like him. And because of that, I'm not going to level him and I'm going to use the characters that I like because that is the point of this game. I use characters that I find cool, interesting, fun and all that stuff. And I want you guys to do the same just because a YouTuber tells you someone's broken or someone's really good. And I know I may be guilty of that. I say Bennett's amazing all the time. I say Child's amazing. Just because of that, uh, like if you want to use them and if you want to use someone that's good, do it. But it doesn't mean that you have to. So that about sums it up, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, this video it took so long to make and research. And I really wanted to make good content for you guys because the support has been unreal and I appreciate it so much. And I want to keep up good, consistent content without rushing it out. So I'm fine with these videos taking forever. And I stream on Twitch most nights and the support's been amazing. So if you guys, and it's been super fun. So if you guys want to come chill and ask questions or whatever, uh, links in the description. Also, you can join my Discord if you want. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, write them because I read most comments. I hope you enjoyed the tips. I tried to balance out like advanced tips that you probably don't know with some that you may know, but that are crucial because I feel like it's hard to make a video about just tips you don't know. So I gave you guys all advanced tips, but some of them, um, like the shop, I felt like, should I mention this? Because people probably already know about the shop. But at the same time, I feel like I should mention it because uh, this month you can get Bennett, which is really important. So it's something that I want to mention before you guys forget and sort of talk about and give my take on it. So that's why if you guys are thinking like, oh, well, 
you know, some of these tips were really like advanced mechanical, but others you just told me to farm crabs. Well, it's cause like, yeah, not all of them are like the same difficulty or whatever, but at the same time, this island I literally found out about yesterday and it's like something that blew my mind. So I felt like it, it's something that a lot of you probably don't know about. And that's why I uh, included it in the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. I'll catch you guys in the next one.